Thank you for joining with us for worship on this Sunday, the Feast of Pentecost, also often referred to as the birthday of the church, for it was the day that things really took off in Jerusalem for the early church. But more of that later. We're going to sing together first, and the song that's been chosen are words by our founder, William Booth, that say, Thou Christ of burning, cleansing flame, send the fire. We're not using the tune that William Booth would have used, but a new, more modern arrangement. Please join with us.
Some months ago at the Bible study which we held at the Salvation Army in Gloucester, we looked at this second chapter of Acts and this, this line that they were all together in one place. And uh, the Bible tells us there were 120 believers in that space. Now, we did it an exercise, and you might want to try this yourselves at some point, looking through scripture and trying to see how many of those 120 you can actually name. And you'll find, surprisingly enough, there's quite a number of them. But we thought from there, actually, the growth of the believers meant that they couldn't be together in one place. But that didn't mean that they weren't together. And so this morning, I want you, wherever you are, to join in this shout that we are together. We are together. We are together. We are together. We are together in this room. And wherever you are, let us hear members of the believing community declare this truth. We, we are, are together. together. We, we are, are together. together. We are 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 together. Jesteśmy w jedności. Whatever she just said. <laughs> we, we are together. together. Up on the mountain, when my Lord spoke, out of his mouth came fire and smoke. because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Breathing. We used to think it was so, so simple. But now we see images in the press, in the media 
of people struggling to get breath, people on respirators, respirators that are taking over from human effort as people are struggling for breathing. We just want to say a huge, huge word of thanks to those who are still working day and night tirelessly to help those for whom breathing is a difficult and almost life-threatening thing. We read in the Bible many times of breathing in the context of what God is doing for his people. In fact, right from the very beginning, as the writers put together their thoughts about creation, we have these words in Genesis chapter 2. God breathed life into dust and man was formed. Well, mankind has gone on hugely from that point. And yet there are times in history, in biblical history, where the need for breath again has been seen. Ezekiel was a prophet, a man who spoke out the word of God. And yet he was on one occasion in a place where he saw a valley full of dead, dry bones. And he thought, can these ever live again? And yet God spoke to him. And God gave him this promise from Ezekiel 37. I'm going to breathe into you and make you live again. When Jesus came from the tomb on that glorious resurrection and he came to his disciples in the upper room, we read in John chapter 20, that he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. This sense of breathing on and through and into means that God is actually engaging in the very essence, the very being of us. Those who have an understanding of such things medically technical will know that the lungs and the heart and the organs of the body work together to bring in oxygen and to get that oxygen to every last corner of the body and then to bring about all the removal of toxins that they are breathed out, got rid of and allowed the next fresh breath to come in. There's been quite a bit in the news in the UK about people wanting to get to the seaside. Now, as one who was born and brought up in South London, um, then had the fortune of, of, of moving to the seaside. I love being by the sea, and it's been such a long time since I've been there. But I do remember on one occasion, on the south coast of England, a few years ago, where exposed to the southwesterly gales, I was almost unable to walk against the force of this wind that was blowing. This was not breath. This was enormous strength. And so when in the Acts of the Apostles, as is our reading today and our reflection today, and we're coming back to the start of this story that we've been thinking of for so many weeks now, we know that in Acts, we read in Acts, that there was this sound like a mighty wind. Now this wasn't that the disciples were buffeted about and everything went haywire in there from, from the force of the breeze. What actually happened was that they sensed the enormity and the power and the potential of God working within them. It was as if the breath of God is not the breath of a, a struggling lung, but the enormity and the power of God flowing in and through people so that they could then go out onto the streets of their city and they could proclaim the news of Jesus in such a way that everybody understood from all kinds of languages that we are together in this. We are working together in this. And you know what? People then began to understand because it was not human effort 
but it was God, the Spirit, working through us to bring about his purposes. Jesse Mountain, a, a hymn writer of a previous generation, wrote this, just a couplet from her, one of her hymns. It says, It's not in my own strength can I accomplish all thou art planning for me day by day. The, the, the hymn writer there is saying that actually we've got to just let God do his work. And if this Pentecost Sunday, this, this Whitsun Sunday, teaches us anything, it's to go with the, with the power of God, not in our own strength. And not in the way that we just want to control everything either. Michael W. Smith a more contemporary hymn writer, wrote a beautiful song and part of the lyric says this, This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. So where did this all begin? It began with God breathing into people, his power, his strength, his might in a way that he was then able to speak through them out into a great and needy world. Bless you this week. Those of you who are believers, allow God to speak in and through you. Take the message wherever and whenever you can and speak with the breath of God, the power of God behind you. May his breath enliven you today. God bless you. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for that first Pentecost when your Holy Spirit came down and filled the disciples and enabled them to go out and to preach your message with power and authority. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will continue to rain down on your church today to fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit, that we too may be able to go out in boldness and to share the good news of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, that the Spirit is like the very air that we breathe, filling us and flowing out from us. And we do ask that you will enable us to do great things for your name. The world is different to what we used to consider normal and perhaps we cannot go out and speak to large crowds of people at the moment as those first disciples did. But just where we are Lord, help us to make a difference in our world. Help us to be willing and available to let your Holy Spirit breathe through us and flow out into all that we do and say because we ask it, Lord, in and through the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We've got one more song to share with you, and this is a song of testimony, which many of us can agree with and say, yes, that's how it was for me. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Saviour, I met. Heaven came down and Thank you. 